Hi, I'm Angela Nicholson, Head of Testing for Futures Photography Portfolio, and today I'm taking a look at the new Sony Alpha 77 II. As you can probably guess, the Alpha 77 II is the replacement for the Alpha 77, and while the new camera has the same pixel count as the original model, 24.3 million effective pixels, the sensor and the processing engine are new. Sensor technology has moved on since the original A77 was announced, and the new camera produces cleaner images at high sensitivity settings. In fact, the results are pretty impressive at the highest selectable setting, ISO 25600, especially if you shoot raw files, as noise is fine-grained with no clumping or banding. With careful processing, you can produce high-quality, though grainy, images. The big news with the A77 II, however, is that Sony has put a lot of work into the autofocus system, and there are 79 AF points, 15 of which are the more sensitive cross-type. In comparison, the original A77 has 19 AF points, of which 11 are cross-type. It's also now possible to vary the speed with which the system responds to changes in subject distance in continuous AF mode, and limit the distance range at which the camera focuses. These are both advanced features which enable you to tailor the focusing to the subject. The AF range control, for example, can be useful when there are objects between the camera and the subject. During my testing, I compared the performance of the Alpha 77 AF system with the Canon 5D Mark III's. In good light, it's hard to tell the two apart. They both perform very well, getting subjects sharp extremely quickly. The Alpha 77 II also manages to track fast-moving subjects around the frame and keep them in focus. I also shot in very low flat light and I found that the A77 II wasn't too far behind the Canon camera. Although it struggled a little bit more, it was still possible to get sharp images. As a single lens translucent camera, the A77 II has a fixed translucent mirror instead of a moving one like an SLR. This means that it has an electronic viewfinder instead of an optical finder. It's the same 2.3 million dot device as found in the Sony Alpha 7 series of compact system cameras. And it's an excellent device showing plenty of detail. And provided that the brightness is set to manual, it displays exposure as it will be captured. The image on the 1.228 million dot LCD screen is also nice and clear, but the articulating hinge seems a little overcomplicated and awkward to use at times. It's also a shame that the screen isn't touch sensitive. One of the great features about this camera is that it's really comfortable to hold, and it's got lots of direct controls all over it, which means you can access the most important features really quickly. I also like the customizable function menu, because this allows you to get to some of your favourite functions really quickly. On the whole, the A77 II produces superb quality images that are well exposed and have lots of detail, as well as pleasantly vibrant colours. This and its ability to keep noise within acceptable limits makes the A77 II a good enthusiast level camera. For more information about the Sony Alpha 77 take a look at my review on techradar.com. Canon's new EOS 5DS. It's the first DSR camera we've seen with an enormous 50 megapixel sensor. More than double the resolution of Canon's 5D Mark III and significantly higher than rival Nikon's offerings. But it doesn't come cheap. The 5DS costs just under $5,000 for the body only. So you're going to be paying extra for lenses. It's certainly expensive for a DSLR, but for the price you're getting a resolution matching or beating professional studio quality medium format cameras that cost thousands of dollars more. This resolution gives you the ability to reframe your shots, easily cropping in without an obvious loss of detail, or zooming in on a face in the crowd. Although previous Canon DSLR cameras were no resolution slouches, with this one, you can take images that can be made into billboards or posters that you can use professionally quite comfortably. To illustrate this camera's capability, Pulitzer Prize winning photographer Vincent Laferre took night shots with the 5DS from helicopters over London, San Francisco, Los Angeles and New York. The results were stunning, showing amazing sharpness and colour. That's no easy feat in a moving helicopter. Although the extra resolution comes at a cost to maximum ISO and low light performance, we found the 5DS great for low light nighttime photography. Canon has made other adjustments to make great performance possible in a camera with such high resolution. The 5DS includes two image processors that reduce the time it needs handling and saving those big 50 megapixel shots. The dual processors also means continuous shooting is still possible. You'll get 5 frames per second, down from the 5D Mark III's 6 frames per second. Canon has also added a mirror vibration feature to stop the mirror's tiny movement from blurring photos. And there's a new inbuilt intervalometer, allowing for easy time-lapse photography. The only real letdown is video. 
The 5DS shoots really pleasing 1080p video, but there's no 4K, the frame rate options are limited, and there's no capacity to monitor the audio as you go. Although Canon doesn't promote this as a video camera, it's disappointing given the 5D Mark III's excellent video capabilities. All of the Canon 5DS is a high quality and versatile camera that extends the capability of what an enthusiast DSLR camera can do.